Today is an updated guide on how to install AmiBerry on Raspberry Pi OS Buster release. So I have a fresh install. All I've done is gone through the first time setup and I've updated all of the packages. So first let's go to AmiBerry's GitHub page. So just Google AmiBerry GitHub. If we scroll down, there's some instructions. So let's go to the requirements. So AmiBerry requires the following packages. So we just need to copy all of this text, do control C, then open up a terminal and then just right click paste and then press enter. And then we'll just wait for all these packages to download and install. There we go, nice and quick. Then we need to scroll down and we need to get the latest version of AmiBerry. But before I do that, I need to explain one fundamental change that happened in Bullseye, and that's the video driver. By default now, it uses KMS driver, which is newer, and the older version used FKMS. Now, what we need to do is look for SDL2 instead of using the Dispman X format. If we go to releases, what we're going to be looking for now is AmiBerry. I'm first looking for Raspberry Pi 4, so yep, I'm not looking for DMX, so I skip past all of those. I'm currently running the 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS. I know that 64-bit uh, is out at the moment, and if you are using that, then that's the one you choose. But in today's video, I'm just using the 32. So this is the link just here that uh, I need. So. Let's click on that and download. Let's open that up. So I'm going to extract it into home slash pi. And then if we go to our files, we've got Raspberry Pi folder there. And then we've got the Raspberry Pi uh, file there. If you're enjoying this video, can I invite you to hit the like button and then I'll know to make more videos just like this. So the last step is that I've just plugged in my USB stick and on there is a load of Mega Kickstart ROMs. So um, I'm not going to say where you can obtain them online, but the official method is using the Amiga Forever pack. So you're looking for ROMs that look like this, ending in a .rom file. And then what we're going to do is go copy all of those. And then we're going to go back to home back to AmiBerry, go to Kickstarts, paste them all into there. And then what we can do is we can copy over some Amiga ADF files. So I've got the Amiga uh, Workbench disk here. So I'm just going to copy that over as an example. So let's go back to home, AmiBerry, and then let's make a folder called uh, floppies. and then paste that into there and then uh, we're all set to go so the last thing to do is just double click on amiberry uh, yes we want to execute it okay and amiberry has loaded up so what we can do now is just uh, select our model so i'm going to choose an amiga 1200 um, i'm going to include some fast ram on it um, i'm going to then go to df0 select a file Let's go to my floppies directory. There's our workbench disk that I've just copied over. And then I just press start. Now by default, the floppy drive is running at real time speed. So this can be quite slow. So one tip to do is uh, press F12. That gets you back into this menu. And then you can go to floppy drives. You can go to where it says floppy drive emulation speed move it all the way to the left and it changes to turbo mode and then let's resume and then this should be a lot faster loading up there we go so workbench is loaded up but ugh, this isn't looking good what's gone wrong so next thing to do is press f12 again and then we need to center the display so we go to displays go to centering tick horizontal and vertical and what I like to do as well is just set auto height as well. 
and then click with zoom and there we go uh, it's a nice good display everything's being shown and there's workbench so in the next video i'm going to show you how to install a hard drive in amiberry and you can find that in this link just here